A lot of people want to be able to write a book. And Nick Gokey not only finished a book, published it on Amazon, but did the whole thing from beginning all the way to end in less than three months. I was thrilled to get the chance to interview Nick Gokey, author, blogger, content creator extraordinaire. He's had millions of views on his content, and I got to talk to him about the secrets behind publishing his book in less than three months. We discussed what the writing involved, what his obstacles were and how he overcame them, what he would recommend to other people trying to do the same thing, how much of it was writing, how much of it was marketing, and what he plans to do differently next time. I am so happy to be able to share this interview with you now. All right, enjoy. Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming to watch this video. I am thrilled both to be interviewing Nick again, who is just such an expert in writing and also specifically about the topic of today's interview, which is how to write a book in three months. So Nick, tell me, how did you write a book in three months? I think the, the secret is starting with things you already have, I guess. So that's the, that's the first point. It wasn't, it wasn't from scratch. It wasn't uh yeah, I didn't start from scratch. Uh, it was a nonfiction book also. I think that also probably helps because fiction is much more um, much more just coming out of your own brain, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you have to completely come up with a story from scratch. Whereas with nonfiction, you always have starting points. I think you always have research, people you gravitate towards, um, you speak of. So I think starting with some existing material helps. Uh, starting with seven years of writing experience helps, I would guess. <laughs> um, so that's also, I've been writing articles for quite a long time and it's not the same, but since books are becoming more like collections of blog posts these days, and that's also actually a good format to follow. Um, it mm -hmm. helps uh, with attention management of the audience and stuff like that. So that helps. And then in terms of actually like being fast while you write it, um, it's really just writing the draft like what everyone says and what st still is good advice I think this whole just write the first draft don't think don't stop to think basically just go through it um I did that for most of the chapters I was just like just get it on the page and then do all the editing later it's so much easier um, to edit garbage than write well <laughs> yes yes yeah. always easier to like work with something you have mold something you have than no matter to, how bad it is yep yep yeah. than to come up with something completely new but he needed a lot of background time, experience, and knowledge in order to be able to accomplish his three-month book writing feat. Nick, you are a blogger. You are a writer. You are a polyglot. Um, so how, before we get into the whole book writing thing, how did you get your start writing full stop? Yes. Um, Jesus. Uh, it, all, the intros are always Seven years Thank ago you. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, se seven years ago. So um, I was between degrees basically bachelor's and master's uh, and I just wanted to be self-employed mm -hmm. and I figured I would try that and I started thinking about it when I was in my bachelor's I was studying abroad and I was on a very business focused uh, career track degree track um, doing management with some tech stuff and I, yes the classics and um, I was really yearning for something more creative I think and I was reading a lot of blogs at the time the 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 popular self-help of the time which was like James Altucher, Ramit Sethi I just thought that was so cool to like just write stuff on the internet and get paid for it and I had no idea cool. of the dynamics behind it right mm -hmm. yeah so I, I just I, I just saw something that seemed to work and so I was like I, I'd rather try doing that and so I literally went okay I'm gonna be self-employed I'm gonna freelance I'm gonna do whatever I don't know really but I'm gonna start writing on the side and Try to make that work. I have a better idea now, or we have a better idea now of how you started. That was seven years ago. You just started writing and it sounds like you just stuck with platforms and made them work, which is, I think it's such a good piece of advice. Like no matter what you're doing, I just want to highlight that for one second. You might not get success right away. It's definitely worth persevering. Um, Cause I mean, you've been doing it now for seven years and I know you've had ups and downs on all the different blogging platforms that you've tried. It's just, it's part of the game. So I want to now fast forward all the way. You just launched your book after writing it in three months, wild. How has that been? Mostly a learning experience um, and a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, the, re the response has also been good. So the book has been out for about a month, a little over a month, and I'm getting close to selling a, a thousand copies or something. Wow. And I didn't, really, I didn't really have nor set a bar for these things. Don't, didn't really know what was possible, what was good, what was bad. Um, but I internally was like, oh yeah, a thousand would be good um, at, in, within the first, I don't know, 60 days or something. And so I'm happy that it was roughly right, I guess, my, mm -hmm. my sort of um, 
no, back of the napkin magic uh, math. And I'm just really busy soaking in all the info and all the learnings. And I'm just trying to write some of it down, frame it, you know, remember it for future editions. So, so that I wasn't too be... obsessed about the numbers. So that was that was kind of good. This won't be your last first ebook then. The, this is one in hopefully many more to come. Yes, hopefully. Yes, that, that's the plan. So yeah. That was, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, right. We know you, where you've been. We know where you are now. I'm now ready to dive into the actual sort of nitty gritty how you write a book in three months, like where all the time went. I would also love to know like how much of it was actually writing and how much of it was all the research you mentioned, like the mechanics, um, book cover design, things like that. So yeah, walk me through the deeper details of how you wrote a book in three months. Mm -hmm. Um. So, the th I mean, it always sounds good in hindsight, right? And it's like, okay, you look at the data and then, okay, it's about 90 days, right? That the catchy it title this for this thing. video, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then if you break it down, it always gets a bit more messy, but it, it still works out to the same result, kind of, but mm -hmm. never in the way you think it would. So, and for me, it was that, um, like we just said, I decided to write a book a year ago, basically. I was like, I'm ready to move into books because um, I've been writing articles for seven years and I was like, I'm ready to level up, try and do something bigger. Mm -hmm. I would hope to write fiction someday. I love nonfiction, so start there. I know this is more familiar to me. And then let me just see what kind of nonfiction books I can produce. I had ideas for like at least five or six um, mm -hmm. that I've been dabbling with here and there. And I have so many articles also that I have material to start with. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I think I have all the ingredients ready. I just need to bake it into something that's a publishable. Book. <laughs> yep, a book. But he didn't find his book right away. In fact, he tried several different books throughout the course of the year on various different topics that he was familiar with. I spent, I want to say, two to three weeks um, very focused um, on this book, which is about personal finance, mm -hmm. and which is not like one of my main topics at all in all of these articles I've written. In the material just felt some more moldable, like it, it, it was just very easy going. Mm -hmm. And I put together an outline, put together a structure, and I was like, cool, I can, you know, based on this catalog of books and material that I have, I can run through it relatively quickly. And I started writing chapters. And so for 10 days, maybe I was writing probably like two chapters a day. And each chapter was also, I was trying to keep it very short. So I tried to keep each chapter to yeah, 700 to a max a thousand words, maybe mm -hmm. 900. And so that kind of made it possible. Yeah. Just using the existing material, rewriting it, starting there. Then I put that book aside and came back at the end of the year when I was panicking and I was like I need something for the year I need to publish something I want to have like you know at least like finish one book and then I came back to it and the second half was really it was much more downhill than I would have expected at that point because I could just keep using the same framework of before and finish the other 25 or so chapters and then the last month I just spent with all the formatting uh, design cover design promotion those kinds of things so the core manuscript and editing also uh, which was a pain and definitely the most painful part, but it was about two months of writing, I want to say, uh, and then the manuscript and then one month of doing the editing, the formatting. Um, yeah. And all the preparing the promotion, Amazon description page, these kinds of things. So it was like two months of two months of writing versus one month of, yeah, all the other bits around it and getting the book out there. Um, yeah. I suspect if I were to try to do this, I would run into the exact same issue, which is I find, I don't even know how many hundreds of articles you've published in your time probably even closer to a thousand trying to decide how what of that enormous massive material to turn into a book must have been really tough it's all well and good to say you spent three months writing a book and that is true but it sounds like there was also nine months of thinking about writing the book that was also really integral to the process of writing the book in three months which is so interesting because I think it would be the same with me just like not really sure where to start spend some time on this spend some time on that and it sounds like once you decided, like once you made that decision, you'd already built a little bit of an, we'll call it an engine to actually produce these chapters. And then from there, it was, as you said, downhill. Yeah. A lot of mine was also just self-sabotage. Like I would move from topic to topic for no discernible reason. I would tell myself, you know, oh, it's not a good time to post this book because the product market fit of the topic is not great and stuff. And it was all it was all it was all bs at the end of the day so i mean it helped that i had an audience i had a project from which sort of this book kind of emerged there was, there was an audience for that project for minute books so i was like okay i know who i'm doing it for so to speak i know what those people want what they're interested in um i know how i have to present it to them so it was a lot lot easier to start with some existing project 
I want to go back to that problem that you said you had, which was self-sabotaging, because I think a lot of the audience of this particular video will have clicked on it because they would also like to write a book in three months. Who wouldn't? Um, and I suspect that a lot of them will have the same problem, which is you start thinking of ways to stop yourself from writing a book, even though that is really what you want to do. How did you, A, identify that that's what you were doing, and then B, get over that? Oh, that's hard. Um, love lots of lots of coffee and, and <laughs> movies and so so lots of I think a lot of it is really just sitting with it and sitting through it like most things in life so I, I I'm not sure how much you can rush the timeline like for someone else it might be three months of procrastination um, and for someone else uh, it might be I don't know a year right so I think it's very different it always depends on what's going on in your life at the I time. guess actually you kind of already gave me your answer which is nine months into the year you were like oh dip I have to write a book in three months and then that, yeah, was, so, that was kind of the yeah. pick up the ass. So you had a deadline. That was, I guess, like step one. And that was your kind of wake up call. It sounds like. I think so. Yeah. I, I always enjoy that part. Like the last two, three months of the year, even I'm spending a lot of time thinking about the year that has passed and what I want to do next year. And then it really hit me like a truck one day that like, oh, like if someone asked me in three months, what did you do in 2021 in terms of like project wise, business wise? I was like, I got nothing. Like, I, I can't really, I can't really tell you how I spend a lot of this time. It's like obviously writing books. Right. But then not really publishing anything and then it was really just a matter of okay yeah yeah just like sit down and, and get it done like why why are you hesitating and it was a lot it was like this switch that you that you you know um flip in your head so the deadline obviously i guess it helps right and uh, mm -hmm. you can probably tweak that you can probably speed that up a little like if i had given myself a, dif a different deadline you would have gotten it right? done before then yeah you know, like you fill the time you have yeah exactly time is like what is it time is like water that fills the container the shape of the container um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's very, I think that's very true. Yeah. And depends how much you respond to deadlines also, right? Because I usually don't do that that much, but then this one for some, I don't know, it just, it just, it just hit it just me. It worked. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So that's kind of how you came to realize it. Once you decided you were going to write this book, I guess this was sometime in September, October, you were going to write this book. It was going to get done by December 31st. And you wanted to be happy with what you'd done, presumably at that point, like you didn't just want to write garbage for the sake of it. Yep. Yep. Then what were your sort of strategies to actually start writing that specific project what were your sort of daily sit down and do it strategies uh i i wrote first thing every day mm -hmm. uh, i try to do that generally because yeah for most writers who want to write their own stuff and aren't working just for hire or, or or things like that where you write about topics that you might not even not really care about too much um it's always hard to prioritize the writing that you do for yourself so to speak uh, and yeah, so I've, I've done that before and I was like, I'm just going to do that with the book and I'm going to try to keep going for as long as I can each day. So I also did that. And usually after two max three chapters, at least for the drafting part, I ran out of steam and I was like, okay, I need to step back. Uh, let this go. Let this sit for a bit. Uh, and yeah, now if I try to ring out more, it's not going to, I'm not, it's not going to give me much. So, mm -hmm. um, and then just okay I, i'll turn to other tasks for the day so like have this fixed discipline starting point and then sometimes it's a slog sometimes you don't really get into it or it takes a while uh, yeah. but then whenever you do find it and you get into it then just keep rolling with it for as long as you can basically until you hit a more of a more of an energetic wall for sure uh, that really um that really helped with all the uh, drafting in these bits and when did you when did you look at what you've done and said yeah this is the book i'm done writing i can now move on to the whatever comes next which we'll get into oh this is this is good uh this is a good point because i structured it very well and i did that before i started the thing mm -hmm. i did that with all the books so all the ones i've started i, I spent a lot of time structuring already mm -hmm. and when i go back to one that i've dropped for a few months the first thing i do is just look at the structure again look at all my notes go through that spend like a day or two just going through the this part so i first of all i mentally get into the right frame for that book but then also just to make sure that the structure is pretty much airtight mm -hmm. i i i mean i just, at this point it's more of a gut feeling i can't really confirm that until i have more books out but i feel like you cannot spend enough time on structuring your book in advance mm -hmm. so it's totally worth it i think to spend an entire week or two of just structuring your book and thinking about the structure whether it makes sense try to poke holes in it uh and all, all yeah try to like ask all kinds of questions about it i think that is uh extremely helpful because once you have that it feels and it feels set in stone and feels wow this is tight this is packed this is this works uh, if i complete this if i complete this roadmap i'm gonna have something that mm -hmm. feels good 
Mm -hmm. uh, then you have so much conviction in your roadmap that it's much easier to follow through on it and not hesitate in between. Because I think one of the worst things that can happen when you're writing a book is that halfway through, you realize you have some fatal flaw in the structure and you need, end up chucking half or a third of your book and you have so to start over with the structure. And that must be, yeah, that must, uh, I think a lot of books, a lot of books have probably died that way on the way yeah. to publication. Two months of that work was purely writing. However, I was really interested in also finding out about the third month, which is where a lot of the success comes from on a place like Amazon. I asked Nick all about his marketing decisions, if he had any strategies for getting reviews, how he chose his cover, and what tools he used to help him out. So I now want to talk a little bit about um, that sort of last month, the, I don't know what to call it, finalizing the details. It was more than yeah. that though. It sounds like that was a lot of that was where a lot of the marketing happened and a lot of the design happened. So talk to me about what that process was like. I structured that part too. And I did that very early on. So one of the first things I started with is I just made a checklist. And uh, for these kinds of things, by the way, if you do these creative projects, I would always encourage you to do it just you. Like don't mm -hmm. look, don't look it up. Like don't, don't start by looking it up. So start by like, if you want to publish a book, what do you think is necessary to do that and make that list? And then once you have that list, you can start looking things up and you can go back to your favorite resources that you might have already had forever or whatever. But that's going to show you where your holes in your thinking were when you made the original list. That's much better. And then you have something to contrast your ideas and opinions against um, the, the ideas and opinions of maybe your mentors or, or idols or whatever. But don't just mm -hmm. like follow some template that's out there. Make your own and see how that stacks up. So I did that also, and it was literally like write manuscript and then like edit manuscript and then Amazon description. And so I like, I just tried to pull out all the bits and bobs that I think were necessary. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once I had the manuscript, I went back to that and I started going through it. And then immediately, of course, I discovered, oh, there's like eight more steps here <laughs> that need to happen before the manuscript is actually finalized. Yeah. And that's also fine. But then you refine your lists, right? And now I have a much longer list, but I can use that for the next book. And then I know, okay, you know, once I get to the finalization stage, I need to figure out margins. I need to figure out gutter. I need to have a tool. So I, I bought some tools like Vellum, for example, which mm -hmm. is cool for formatting and it formats for your print and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, there's, there's um, make a plan, execute it. And then whatever bumps you come in along the way, work those into your plan. If you, especially if you want to redo the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it was really, yeah, it was a long checklist. And that was also cool because it felt downhill after all the writing part. So if you do, you know, if you did something creative for, for a while and then uh, you're kind of, oof, yeah, I just, I feel like I dropped a big rock somewhere. Then it's, it's often easier to just run through this checklist of more operational things. And it's like, okay, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that. But then you can just go through and get those things. So that was actually, um, there was not too much procrastination there, even though it's not my favorite part. I'm very much uh, like, I prefer the writing usually. But you had a list and you were able to stick to it because you had faith in that list because you had made it yourself and then bolstered it kind of after the fact with opinions from yeah the people that you respect in that field. That makes a lot of sense to me. So you mentioned Vellum. Were there any other tools or sort of experts in the field that you would recommend for other people who wanted to do the same thing? Uh, I try to, I always try to go as bare bones as possible and lose, use the least amount of tools and whatever else uh, possible. And mm. I think in terms of tools and what I used, it was uh, Vellum for formatting. Uh, I, I wrote the book in Ulysses and I'm starting to use Ulysses app as for more writing in general. Uh, and that also, it already has some EPUB export function and so on, but it was somewhat limited in, in the formatting. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, Vellum for getting all, getting the print ready also for hardcovers and paperbacks. And it was really helpful. Um, th that made it really easy. I used, uh, oh, I think it's called Publisher Rocket, which is about finding Amazon keywords, those kinds of things. So I did some research, mostly YouTube videos. I think self-publishing with Dale is a cool channel. Um, I ended up watching his videos a lot. Uh, and what, what is the other, Kindlepreneur, I think. Um, so I watched some videos mainly by, by those two guys, those two channels, uh, and then used some tools to, to do some of the Amazon backend stuff. And 99designs before the cover, uh, because that is also very common advice, but I, it can't be cited often enough. Have a professional cover. Like if you're not, if you're not a, a professional book cover designer, then just, just outsource it. Just pay good money for it. That's like 500, 300, 200 bucks that you'll never regret spending. Wow. That's going to have such a high ROI. I did a book very early on, like a private little ebook that I did basically as just me about Googling and stuff. And I did it all by myself. And the cover is absolutely, it looks like a three-year-old made it. And the book has sold accordingly. So um, <laughs> But this yes. is, I mean, it just goes to show, right? Like you had, you already wrote a book. It didn't grow to go 
as well as you'd hoped. You didn't let that like stop you from writing again. You just learned from that and moved on with your life and still did work that you were proud of. And I think that's also like a really important message because I think a lot of folks get hung up on their first failure. Like it's so hard to do something for the first time. And then when you go to that effort, you hit publish on that first blog post and you get nothing, none of the promised rewards, then you're like, well, what's the point of doing it again? And I think there is, like, if you enjoy the work and you believe that you can do better, then there's always a point to hitting publish or writing that book or trying that masterpiece, paint by numbers, whatever, again. I think now, I mean, who can ever really summarize writing a book in three months in a, in a 20 minute interview, but I feel like I do have a good idea of, of how you did it. So it seems like, and this were, these were my takeaways. I took notes. You didn't start by like having this, I don't know, this idea. You started first by accumulating seven years worth of content. And at that point you had a really good idea of what your topics were. And you also said that you wrote, this I thought was really interesting. You wrote for an audience and that was a little bit less intimidating because you had a better idea of what they were interested in, what they would want, um, what they were looking for, what problems they had. And you could write a book for them Whereas I think like a lot of people write a book purely based on what they, what they think and what they feel. And that can feel really scary because you're like, well, what if I'm wrong? And you knew that you weren't because you had that audience and, you know, that existing body of work. You had a deadline. I, I, <laughs> I work really well under deadlines. I wish I didn't, but I need them. So this really resonated with me that you had this arbitrary goal in mind. And that was what kind of gave you the wake up call to, yeah, sit down, get this done. You didn't look for advice at first. And that I thought was really interesting and almost like really opposite to a lot of the other advice I've seen online. You started first by creating your own to-do list, both for the actual writing portion for the outline, but also for the marketing aspect of things and everything you'd need to do to create the book. And then you went and looked at the advice and sort of filled in the holes in your knowledge. I thought that was wild, but that seems like it worked really well for you. And then the actual writing itself, you picked a time, which for you, you already knew. And I guess this goes back to like having that experience in that bag while you already knew right first thing in the morning, you knew to like identify that moment that you start running out of steam and just stop there. And, you know, sometimes writing to that point is annoying and sloggy, but you got to get it done. And yeah, you knew when to stop with the book altogether. Cause that was in your sort of earlier pre-work that you'd done ahead of time, structuring that book and knowing what it was, what the final shape of it was going to look like. Um, and finally, your tools were Vellum, Ulysses, Publisher Rocket, Self-Publishing with Dale, and 99 Designs for the cover. So um, that was a three-minute summary of how to write a book in three months. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Uh, that, I that mean, you, you did the work. Yeah. I think you're the, you're the real amazing one here. That's incredible. <laughs> Congratulations again on writing a book, first of all, all together. So many people say they want to be writers. So if you actually do it. So putting yourself in that camp is like, it's an incredible step. So amazing. Um, and yeah, do you have any sort of final words of advice for anybody else who wants to do what you did and wants to write a book, whether it's in three weeks, three months, three years, what's your, what's your get or done advice? I think that if you feel drawn towards an idea, and in this case, maybe it's writing a book, then you should definitely go for it. And you can, I think you can go right at it. And if you fail for whatever reason, but you still can't let the idea go afterwards, then maybe you just need to find some workaround. And for me, that was also, I've always been reading books and, and as a child, I devoured them, especially fiction and so on, but I've been writing mostly nonfiction for seven years. So uh, life has, um, and who knows if I ever um, come back around to writing fiction, but in novels and, and stuff like that, but I'd love to. So life, life has funny ways of working out, but as long as you feel there's something there, just keep grasping at it and just, you know, use whatever straw you can find and wherever you find the fun and the thing that the momentum that pulls you through, just keep rolling with that for as long as you can. And then the rest usually falls into place and it might be years later, but um, yeah, life usually has a, life finds its way like the great uh, Jurassic Park advice, I think <laughs> as, as yeah. the line goes. So That's um, fantastic advice. I found that very true. Thank you so, so much for sharing all your secrets. I hope everybody enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and anything to plug Nick other than of course your book. The book is called The Four Minute Millionaire. And if you put that on Amazon, uh, you'll find it. I hope everybody who watches this goes to at least check it out on um, Amazon. I'll include the link in the video description and yeah. Thanks again so much for sharing all your wisdom and your advice, and I will see everybody very soon. Happy writing, everyone. Bye. Bye. Wow, what an interview. You can find all the links we mentioned in the video description below. And 
take this opportunity to take some accountability and get your own deadline going. Let me know in the comments what book you're gonna be writing and when you want to have it done by. And we'll come back and see if you manage to do it. Fingers crossed for you, I'm rooting for you. Until we speak again, happy writing.